mean, we put $12 million in this company and we want to return so that we can make even more than the $12 million. Invest also means to provide or endow someone or something with a particular quality or attribute or attribute. Attribute. Say that, say that 12 times. We invested time in Jack, our shepherd dog, because we wanted to make him mind us. What, what did we invest? Somebody tell me what, what we invested there. What did we invest? Gary. Time. Time. That's exactly right. So we didn't invest money, but we invested time. So we can invest other things besides just money. We can invest some of our talents, some of our attributes, some of our characteristic things of us that are not necessarily associated uh, with money. If you have your Bibles, we're, we got our Bibles open here to Matthew chapter twenty-five, and we're going to read. I'm going to read a lot of verses. So I want you to. I want you to follow along with me. We're going to be Matthew chapter twenty-five, starting in verse. 14, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand, a man traveling into a far country, he called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the saints and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two also gained another two. But he that received one went with and dig in the earth and did his Lord and, and hid his Lord's money. So what tell me what happened in the story thus far? We're going to stop right there, and I want you to explain to me what happened. Charlotte. Okay, so we have three people, right? We have three people. We have three people, right? What did he give? What did he give the first one? Charlie. Nope. Nope. Try again. There you go. Five. So he gave that one five. What did he give the next one, Addy? Two. Two. And what did he give the final one? Gary. One. One. That's correct. Here's a question. I want you to stop and think about this. Why did he give different amounts? Why didn't he split it up equally? Yes, sir. Because the first one was his most trusted. The second one was his second most trusted. The third one was um, most of his trusted. Let's go ahead and put it. So there was different abilities within each one of those people, correct? Do we all have different abilities in here this morning? Yes, we do. Are we all really good with money? But let's be honest. No. Sometimes, I'll be honest with you, I'm not good with money. I'll go to the store when I'm super hungry and I'll go to the grocery store and I'll spend lots of money. And Miss Laura will be like, now wait just a minute. That was not on our list to get this week. And I'll say, but I had to have those chocolate chip cookies and those icy oranges. They're my favorite. And Ms. Law will say, now, Benny, we didn't have that on our list to get. We we're supposed to stay with the list, stay with our budget, stay with what we need. And we already had some other drinks at the house that we needed to drink first. So my ability to go to the grocery store and to stay on a strict uh, list is hard for me. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. I want to buy everything. He needs to learn not just well, that's true. But the grocery store is the big one. 
<laughs> if I go in a Bass Pro Shops and I and I see all that fishing stuff in there and all those cool rods and all those cool lures, guess what? I'm gonna end up with a lot of stuff that I probably already have at home. But I love that stuff. Now, somebody with the ability to have some control in their life a little bit, like maybe like they now he could go in there and he say, you know what? Now I don't really need 25 crank baits. I don't need 14 sets of hooks. I'll just get one pack of hooks, I'll get one crankbait, and I'll get some of those little plastic worms, and I'll be done. And Mr. Benny, I would try to buy it all. I like all that stuff. So, Vade's ability might be different than mine. The ability of this first person in the Bible was pretty great. So, the, the master gave him five talents, five pieces of silver. The second one, he gave two pieces of silver. And the third one, he gave one piece of silver. Now, we shouldn't get caught up on the abilities of what everyone has in here. We shouldn't compare ourselves. to Like me and Bay shouldn't compare ourselves. to you know what, Bay? Because you're stricter at the grocery store. You're a better person than I am. No. He just has a different ability than I have. We're all equal. But he has a different ability. He's stronger in that than I am. Somebody on the baseball field can hit better than I can, can teach better than I can. Should I be mad at that? No. They're part of my team. We should learn from that. So everyone has different abilities. Let's keep reading. Verse number 19. And after a long time, the Lord with little L. What, what does that mean with the little L, Lord? Does anybody know? That's exactly right. So the master, the one that's, that's talking to them is their Lord, their master. So after a long time, the Lord, little L, their master, came back to the servant uh, of those servants, cometh and reckoning with him. And so that he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, Thou, have, uh, thou deliverest unto me five talents, but I have gained besides them five talents more. There's a difference in this verse. What is the difference in Lord here in this in this verse? This is not really a crazy No, I'm, I'm specifically talking about the word Lord now. I just want you to see this in the, in the word God. Well, what's the difference in the Lord in verse number 20 and the Lord in verse number 19? I want you to read it. Yes, ma'am. Um, That's exactly right. See, there's a difference here. And I don't think, I didn't even catch this the first time I read it. I was like, why is he talking to his Lord? Why is he saying that again? And then it, it just hit me. I'm reading it incorrectly. He's talking to God here, isn't he? So he, the, the first verse in number 19, he said, after a long time, the, the master, the Lord, the, the guy that gave us these talents has come back to us. And I'm reckoning with him. I'm explaining to him why I have these talents and how much I've gained. But in verse number 20, he says, you know what, Lord, you gave this to me and I invested. He's talking to God right now. And he's saying, this is what I did with those five talents. So I want you guys to see that. Verse number 21. Then we go back to the master, lowercase l. His Lord said unto him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He's saying, you know what? He said, I, I was your commander. I was the person in charge of you. I gave you these silver pieces, and you went out and you invested. You took that five, and you invested it and got five more. So now you have five more pieces out here. That's awesome because you spread that out and you've made more and you've invested more. That's awesome. He says, that was perfect. That's exactly what I want you to do. Let's keep reading in verse number 22. And he that also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, he's speaking to God now again, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained other uh, two other talents besides them. So he had two and now he's got two more. So he's doubled what he's had. He's doubled what he's had. And that's exactly what he wanted him to do. Now, five plus five equals what? Ten. Ten. So that's the most. Two plus two equals what? 
4. Now, 10 is the greater number here, right? 10 is the most. Who, who is God more, more proud of here? Somebody raise your hand, Tim. Billy? That is exactly right. He's proud of both of these guys right here. It doesn't matter how much you bring to him because guess what? Who owns all of that? Who? God, right? God owns all of that. So he's not impressed by your numbers or how much you give in the tithe and offering. What he's impressed with is that he said, I invested in you and I want you to invest back. If I put a thousand dollar paycheck into the offering plate and Andrew puts ten million dollars into the offering plate, we're both doing what he asked us to do in relation to how much money we make. Who's he more proud of? He's proud of both of them. That's exactly right. You see, it doesn't matter your abilities or what God gives you or what he blesses you with. What he wants you to do is have the same heart. And he wants you to invest and to give back. It doesn't matter if you put 10 pieces in the offering plate. If you can only put four pieces in the offering plate, that's what he wants you to do because he's invested. It's not the amount. It's the heart. So let's keep reading. Verse number 22. Let's read that again before we stop. And he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, God, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained other two talents besides them. And verse number 23. And his Lord, his, his master said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over these, these two things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Verse number 24. Then he, which had received the one talent, came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man. He says, you know what? He said, I know you're a tough boss. I know. Um, actually, I said that wrong. I know that you're a tough God. Reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not as straw. He's saying, God, I know that you were tough and you gave this to me. So what I did was I was afraid. I didn't want to lose this one piece that I had. By investing in. So what I did was. I went and dug a hole. And I put that money in that hole. So that it would be safe. And nobody could touch it. And nobody would mess with it. And I would have that one. To return. And it says. And I was afraid. And went and hid that talent in the earth. Lo thou hast that is thine. And his Lord answered and said. Unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. This is his master. This is his boss. Thou knewest that I that I reap where I not I sowed not, and gather uh, where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take take therefore the talent from him and give it to unto him which have ten talents. So he says, you know what, because you didn't invest, because you wanted to hold on to that one, because you were scared and you didn't invest like I asked you to do. What I'm going to ask you to do now is I'm going to ask you to give that one to the guy that had 10. And now he will invest in that. For unto every one that hath be given and shall be shall have abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast his unprofitable servant into our darkness, therefore shall Shall there be weeping and gnashing of teeth? This guy is sad right here now because he didn't invest. He's taken away from the fold. He's taken away from these two guys because he said, I want to, I want to hold what you gave. I don't want to share it with anybody else. I don't want to invest it with anybody else. And that makes his servant very unhappy. And ultimately, that makes the Lord unhappy. What's the importance of this story, this parable? Can anybody explain to me what the importance of this story is? Charlie? Do what God says and know what now? He'll give you more of it. That's, that's good. I like that. Lucy? 
The weapon? Oh, stretching his arm. Yes? Oh. Okay. You know, I, I think there's a very important lesson to this, and I, I think this goes far beyond money. I, I think we need to be smart with our money. I think your parents will probably teach you that along the way. Um, Andrew, you, you have a house that you own, right? Uh, that you're investing in. Uh, I think, did you buy a house? No. I'm sorry. No, I thought you did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. But she did. She, something fell through. Temple. Mr. Kyle Poston uh, turns houses. He buys houses. He'll put money into those houses and then he'll turn around and sell those houses for more money. He invests in that property and then wants to sell it for a profit. That's the principle of money. Uh, I think this is taught in the Bible to invest and then to, to reap once you put the work in. But there's also something else that you can invest in that, that it doesn't cost money. You see, there's things that you have. You put your hands down. We'll get questions in just a second. That you can invest in that doesn't cost you a penny. What's something that we can invest? Somebody raise your hand and tell me something we can invest. That doesn't make that doesn't necessarily cost us money, but it may cost us something else. Really? Um, what did you say? Our soul. Our soul. Okay, so you're talking about investing in other people's souls, maybe like different souls. That's good. Okay, what's what's something else we can invest in? Chuck. God. That's number one. So what, what does it take to invest in God? What does it take to invest in soul? Sharp? So does it take time? It takes time, right? So we can invest our time into God. We can invest our time in talking to others. Do, do I, this is just a question. Do I get paid by the church to teach this class? No. Do, do you get paid to work on a bus route, Andrew? No. Miss Laura, do you get paid to help in children's class? No. Do you guys get paid to help and help your parents around the church here? No, not necessarily. We invest our time, we invest our hearts, we invest our souls because we love the Lord, right? We want to follow Him and we want to invest things that have a meaning. In the story, we see the we see the money that was invested. We see how if it was invested properly that it made more money. It made twice the amount of money here. It made twice the amount of money here. And the problem here is it was never invested, correct? It was put in a hole and hid. If you hide yourself to other people, if you hide your time, if you're selfish with your time, if you're selfish with your, your attributes, your kindliness, your friendliness, you're not going to have any friends, are you? You're not going to have people that you influence. You're not going to have the blessings that God has for your life because you've not invested. You've got to put some time and some effort in that, don't you? You've got to make that effort to invest like the Bible says here. Faith? Oh, it, it does take courage, and we'll talk about that in just a second. That's exactly right. But there's a couple of things I want to mention to you guys about ways we can invest. And then we'll have some questions at the end, okay? So just put your hands down for just right now. Prayer is a one way that we can invest, right? How, how, how can we invest in prayer? Who can, who can we pray for? John. That's exactly right. People that are homeless, people that are in need, we can pray and we can offer uh, help in that. Jolie, who are some other people we can pray for? People that need God, people that need the Lord, right? We can pray for those people. I think sometimes this is the most overlooked thing we do as Christians, and I'm guilty of this. I'll be honest with you. You walk by someone, you see them in the hospital, you see something's going on, you're like, hey, I'm praying for you. And it's just kind of something you say, you know? You don't really take the time 
to invest in hours of prayer for that person because you truly care about them or you really believe that God can make a difference. You just say it because it's the right thing to say, right? I think sometimes I get convicted of that. And I have to take some specific time to pray. And I make this kind of a, a, a kind of an absolute in my life. Like when I when I say, if, if I really say I, I'm gonna pray for this person, I take time right then. And I don't I don't necessarily close my eyes, but I start praying right then for that person. Because I don't want to tell them a lie and say, you know what, I, I pray for you and I, I never even pray for you. So I do it right there as I'm talking to them. I start praying for them so that it's in the forefront of my mind that they need that prayer. So we pray for missionaries. We pray for our preacher. We pray for our staff. We pray for our parents, our baby, our brothers, our sisters, our babysitters, those people that we come in contact with, the people on our baseball team, the people on our softball team. And we pray for those people because that's one way we can invest. And when we invest in prayer like that, guess what? It takes effect on people. They know that you're praying for them. They know that you're trying to make a difference in their life through Jesus Christ. And they appreciate that, I believe. Another way that we can invest is to disciple a new believer. What does it mean to disciple? Charlotte? That's right. That's right. To teach them some things about the Bible, to Help them along the way. Say, you know what? This is what this is what I was taught, and this is what we learned in, in Sunday school last week. This is what me and my family do on a nightly basis. We read the Word of God. We learn about these principles in our lives, about faith, about trust, about being saved. That's what we do. And you disciple them. You teach them so that they can learn those other ways. You spend time with them. You be patient with them. This is a big thing with me, and I get convicted about this a lot. You see somebody at church that you really don't care for, let's be honest. And you're like, I don't really like them because they like this, and they hang out with these people, and they do this, and they do that. Is that the way we should act? No. God says that's an abomination to him. He says love your brother like you love yourself. Well, I love myself a lot. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to look out for Benny and I'm going to look out for my family. But if it were to come down to it, would I look at Andrew the same way as like he's part of my family? I should. You should do the same. We should disciple and we should pray for those other people. We should spend time. We should be patient. We should give direction on scripture. We should invite people over. And we should be good disciples for Christ. The third thing, and this is this is an awesome thing too, and I know a lot of you guys do this, is we work for the church. We do things. We teach Sunday school. We teach children's classes. We teach Awana. We have sports that we help with. We have after school care we help with. We have classes that we assist with. We have cleaning stuff that we assist with in this, in this code. There's a lot of work to be done at the church, and we need to be a part of that so that we are investing some time in things that count. You say, well, what does cleaning a bathroom have to do with investing time for God? Well, people that come to church have to be able to use the restroom, don't they? So it's not above us to go and help. It's not above us to go pick up a piece of trash. It's not above us to go clean a restroom. We should be willing to do that so that we invest in our church. The fourth and final thing, and I'll be through, is we need to invest in the souls of men. We've talked about that a little bit. We need to tell people about Jesus, don't we? Why is it so important that we tell people about Jesus? What is on the line? Can someone tell me? Charlotte? Your life. If I realized that my wife and my son were on a railroad track this morning, and at the other end of that railroad track was a speeding train, it was headed 100 miles an hour down that track, and they were pinned to that track, they were tied down, I would give it my all to be able to go 
cut that cord and to get them away from that track to free them from that imminent danger. Why is it that we don't see salvation that way? Why is it that when we're in the grocery store and someone's talking to us about troubled times in their life, maybe they're having a conversation about not being able to be back in church because they feel like they're around hypocrites. Why don't we see that the same way? Why don't we see that as a call for help? Because we're too selfish. We're too worried about what we have going on in our lives. We're too worried about getting out, getting our burgers on the grill. We're too worried about getting home, getting our pizza out of the oven. And we say we don't have the time for that. Shame on us. Shame on us for being so selfish, right? And there's nothing wrong with taking care of your family. There's nothing wrong with getting your pizza out of the oven. But sometimes we need to take some time. And we need to invest in the souls of men and ladies. Sometimes we need to take time and we need to put forth the extra effort to tell people about Jesus. I'm guilty of that. And sometimes the Lord speaks to me and says, you know what? You, 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 you missed it. You messed that up. That person was trying to tell you that they needed Jesus and you didn't have time. You didn't put forth the effort. Shame on me. There was a story that I've told you about before. This lady comes to my mind several times. And it was a lady that I met up in Fuquay years ago, a few years ago. And she was working behind the counter. And she was telling me about all of her life all the struggles that she had gone through. She was telling me that <clears throat> her son had ended up in trouble. He'd ended up in prison. She told me about all the hard things in her life. And all I could think about in my mind, because I had a lot going on that day, was just getting my burger and, and getting out of there. But I think truly... She was wanting someone to share something with her. She needed something bigger in her life. She needed something that was going to change her. I actually felt guilty about it. I think the Lord spoke to me about it. I went back up there the next week, and she had quit. The people said that she had, uh, I asked them, and the people said she had moved back to New Jersey or, or somewhere like that. She was gone. I thought many times that I should have witnessed to that lady. I should have told her about Jesus and the difference that he can make in your life. I don't want their lives to be on our hands because we're not willing to tell them about it, you know? I want us to be excited about sharing the gospel to those people that don't know. And I need to be better at that. How many of you guys would say, you know what? I need to be better at that. I'm being honest this morning. I need to be 10 times better about that. Because somebody invested time in me. Somebody invested Time to look after my soul to tell me about Jesus and it changed my life forever how many of you guys are saved this morning how many, glad, how many guys are glad that you're not destined to a place called hell I'm glad this morning my life is forever changed we need to invest 
like the first guy did, like the second guy did. But we need to be cautious about the third. Because if we keep it all to ourselves, at the end of that, our Lord's not going to be happy. He wants you to invest in other people. He wants you to share what you have, what he has given you. And he will multiply. Everybody's head bowed and everybody's eyes closed. You say, Brother Benny, I appreciate the lesson that you shared this morning on investment. I learned today that I need to invest my time, my soul, my heart, my life in God and what things that matter. You say, Brother Benny, I, I want to work on that as a, as a Christian. I want to be able to invest in other people's lives. And I want to be able to help other people out. But I need your prayer this morning, please. Would there be anybody like that this morning? Simple hands going up. I appreciate that. You say, Brother Benny, I appreciate those hands. You put those down. I'm kind of like the last guy in the Bible. I'm keeping all my stuff to myself and I'm not really sharing it with other people. Sometimes I'm selfish with my time. Sometimes I'm selfish in my heart. Sometimes I'm selfish with my thing. And I want to change that this morning. 